Compared to the rest of the world, Viking ships were high tech. Their ships were thin and light, which allowed for portages. The ships were also shallow, which allowed them to traverse small creeks. These features of the ship helped them trade as far as the Byzantine Empire. All this trading gave them wealth, which they used to buy weapons. In fact, weapons were so important in their culture that nearly everyone was buried with one, even slaves. While we're on the topic, the Norse did a lot of slave trading. Remember, the purpose of a small v Viking is to trade and raid. Slaves were such an important part of their society that high-ranking Norsemen were typically buried with a slave or two for the afterlife. Axes were used as common house tools, which is probably why women were buried with them. Another use for axes is warfare, but they don't look like these giant axes like in the movies. The real war axes had a single 45 centimeter blade and was as tall as a man, but a smaller axe is more practical in combat because they take less time and effort to swing. In war, commoners used spears in addition to the weapons mentioned earlier. Spears make economic sense because they only have about 20 to 60 centimeters of low quality metal. Swords were used by royalty, great warriors, and the rich. The fancier the sword, the more important the person. That's because swords are expensive. Only those that went on Vikings can afford to trade for one. And yes, they traded for swords instead of forging one because of the poor metal quality in Scandinavia. Swords were so expensive that they were either passed down the family line or destroyed before burial, because otherwise people would dig up graves. But how expensive could a sword be? It was valued at about half a crown or 16 milking cows, and that's at least $25,000 in today's money if cow inflation rate is a reliable index. Swords were typically used for stabbing and lunging because of their relatively light weight. If the Vikings wanted to hack at someone, they'd use a six. With all these weapons, how do they defend themselves? Shields were typically made up of light fibrous wood with the edges wrapped in leather or metal. A common shield formation is a scalpel or shield wall. Another formation is the Zvintfilti, or wedge, for attacking. Though metal armor existed at the time, not too many are found in burial sites. This could either be because only the top warriors wore them, or that they preferred not to wear any armor at all. It could also be the case that they wore natural fibers, such as leather and cloth, to protect themselves. A cool piece of armor archaeologists found was a lamella, which could have come from the east. Think about it, Viking Samurai. And of course, there are famous helmets, but I'll talk about them in the next video. Bye-bye.